Change your heart, change your life, change the planet. Hey everybody, it's Tim Van Orden, and right now I'm on the Appalachian Trail behind my house at a location that we locals call The Burning. The Forest Service comes through every couple years and they burn this area off. I'm not sure how large, but I don't know, maybe like 50 to 70 acres, they just burn it down. And then all these berry bushes come up, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, you've got this giant pasture of berries. And the reason they do that is so that wild animals have a high elevation buffet, in a sense. A place for them to eat so they don't have to come down the mountain into town and go through people's garbage. This way the bear and other animals that eat berries uh, can hang out up here and be safe and not uh, interact with human beings. Except crazies like me that run through here all the time. And as I'm up here looking down on Bennington in the distance, it looks really small. Like I can take the Bennington Monument and I can squeeze it to about that big. That's how big it is, but it's actually 306 feet tall. And I can take the whole town and crumple it up in my hand. It's only that big. But the human brain understands that those things aren't actually that small. I can't take the entire town and put it in my hand. My brain knows that. It knows that that's far away. So what ends up happening is our brain takes this large thing with lots of buildings and lots of people and roads and traffic lights and all kinds of drama and happiness all happening at once down there and it says that's called Bennington and it's this big. There it is. In fact, if you look on a map, it's just a little dot and it says Bennington next to it. It's a representation and our brain creates representations in time as well as in distance. And when it creates a representation in time, it does something called chunking. It takes all the individual elements and it combines them into one chunk. And then the brain will process all of those individual details as one entity, one chunk. I'll use going for a run as an example. That's a chunk, going for a run. That's a lot of steps. First thing you have to do is find your running clothes or decide which running clothes you're gonna wear and then find them, find your shoes, put them on. Okay, those are individual steps find each article of clothing. You can't get dressed all at once. That's a chunk too. Okay, there's a top, there's a bottom, there's an under bottom, there's nipple protectors if you're wearing tech shirts, but I'm wearing cotton now. Uh, there's your shoes, there's tying your shoes, there's socks, there's all that stuff. Then there's getting hydrated, making sure you're fueled up, other steps. And for me today, I drove, I didn't run directly from the house because it's kind of muddy, so I drove up Route 9 and took the Appalachian Trail. And so I had to get in the car, I had to decide where I was going, I had to drive there, then I had to get my iPhone, figure out which book I was gonna listen to, put on my earphones, hit play, start my watch, or find satellites, and then start my watch, and then run. And then as the run began, I'm starting up the thousand steps, which are really, really challenging. So I just got myself to focus on this step, and this step, ooh, look at that moss, ooh, there's a chipmunk, ooh, here's a really pretty rock, ooh, that's slippery, be careful and I was focusing on the individual steps, the individual elements as I went up that hill. So by the time I got here, a couple miles later, I've put in I don't know how many different steps that my brain had chunked into one thing called go for a run. Chunking definitely has its advantages if you're already moving, if you've already got momentum, if you've already got really strong habits, then the running chunk is really useful because you've got the habits built. But if you don't have the habits built yet, those chunks can actually be really dangerous. They end up like fists that just keep jabbing at you because it's too much. Because my brain is trying to process the entire thing at once, rather than saying, all you have to do is find which clothes you're gonna wear, that's it. When you're done with that, then we can move on to the next thing. But if I've gotta do the run, then suddenly it seems overwhelming because then there's just too many details and it's just too much to figure out and I give up. Okay, I quit. I'm just gonna go eat some carbs. I'm gonna carb the F up, which isn't gonna help because that's still not gonna point me in the direction of any particular step. So chunking is really good if you've already built a habit, if you've already got momentum. But when you're stuck, when you're stopped, when you're trying to build a habit, when you're trying to get yourself engaged and get yourself into action, when it's difficult, then you need to take those chunks and break them into their component parts and focus on one at a time in order. And order is really important. What's the first thing I have to do? 
not worry about running up the thousand steps and how much that's going to hurt. That's not the first thing on my list. The first thing is clothing. What am I going to wear? Figure it out. Put it on. Boom! Check! Yay! I'm in motion. I'm moving. What's next? I'm going to drink something and then I'm going to eat something. What am I going to eat? How about a couple bananas? Boom! Done! Check! Now what? Grab your iPhone, grab your headphones, grab your recorder, grab the car key, walk outside. Boom! Check! And I just keep going through the process like this. I do it slowly. I'm present to the steps. I'm present to how I feel in each one of these steps. And I build momentum, build momentum. So that I don't even have this chunk called the run anymore. I simply have a day or an experience that has lots of different moments in it. And when our brain takes all these individual elements and chunks them into the run, it says, well, they're all similar to each other. They're all run. But getting dressed looks nothing like driving in the car. And that looks nothing like running up the hill, which looks nothing like running along the top of the mountain once the hill is done, which looks nothing like standing here and enjoying the view and eating raspberries. See, all of that detail was lost. Just like when I look down on Bennington now, I can't see the detail. I can't hear any conversations. I can't see any cars moving. All I see is this thing called Bennington there. It's not alive. It's abstract to me. I can't hear its heartbeat. I can't see the fine details. So we want to avoid creating these chunks that have distance and time that are far from us temporally. All right, We want to bring them really close and we want to look at the fine details and we want to get engaged with those details, work with those details. That's where the steps happen. That's where momentum begins. The little hairs, the fine details. Okay, so if you're stuck, and you can't go for a run, stop trying to go for a run. What's step one? What am I going to wear? Start there. Okay? I love you guys. It's a vast sea of wilderness and endless dirt roads and mountains, and I love it up here. It's the perfect place to get lost, because when I'm feeling lost, getting lost always does the trick.